Hello friends, it's me, Shin, and today I'm coming to you from the corner of Decatur and Flamingo where we're checking out Makino Sushi and Seafood. Happy to have you along with me, let's head inside. And here we are everyone, seated at Makino Sushi and Seafood Buffet. I'm here for their weekend lunch, which clocks in at $30 per person. And it is my first time eating here and I'm really excited to check it out. Let's see what they have on the buffet line. And let me take you through the buffet here. Here's some white rice. And the sushi section, we have some deep fried rolls here. And some California rolls next to some crab rolls. These are salmon and cooked tuna rolls. Here we have shrimp on the right and spicy tuna on the left. And here is an additional tuna roll as well as a seafood mix. Salmon on the right here, as well as some shrimp tempura. That looks really good. And here is tuna, as well as tuna and salmon. Spicy crab and Philadelphia roll here. I mean, the sushi selection is looking really excellent. Here is some mixed fish and avocado rolls. Shrimp tempura here on the right, crab on the left. And some additional shrimp tempura rolls and crab rolls on uh, the end here. Wrapping you around, here are some sauces and utensils. And this is more of the nigiri section. We have some octopus and shrimp. And then next to that we have squid and clam. Clam nigiri, I don't know if I've seen that before. Here are some surf clams and crabs. And then we have some salmon nigiri as well as some tuna. Here's albacore and tilapia. As well as mackerel and beef. That's very interesting here. Very nice. Keeping the theme going, we have some inari. As well as tuna cut rolls here. And that is next to the tamago egg as well as some more shrimp tempura rolls. We have a salmon skin roll here, as well as the spicy crab. And we have futomaki, as well as salmon rolls here. This is really beautiful. We have some eel rolls, as well as some tuna rolls. And then some cucumber cut rolls here. And then that brings you to a hand roll station. However, it looks like this is only for the dinner service, so it's not available to me. Lemons, ginger, and wasabi here. All looks really nice. Let's wrap around to the salad section. Let me bring you around here. Alright, we have some artichokes in the top right. Hijiki, and then some edamame in the top left there. We have some tomatoes and tuna salad. Seaweed salad and harusame as well. Some vinegar and ponzu sauce here for you guys. And some more freshness here, some sprouts. A cucumber salad here. That's really nice. And then right next to that we have a Caesar salad. Next to the Caesar salad is a kale mix. And then that is all of the salads available here at Makino. And then if we take a look next to that, we have some teriyaki chicken. That looks great. And that is next to some yakisoba. Your pan fried noodles here. We have some beef short ribs with some asparagus it looks like. and some fried rice as well. Here is some tilapia fish. And that's next to the vegetable tempura. And that is next to some shrimp tempura here. You have your tempura sauce out of a little dispenser. That's very nice. And then you have a soup bar here. 
Looks like you have your options of uh, shoyu, tonkatsu, or udon noodles. Yeah, that's nice. And then continuing on with the hot food, we have some seafood pancakes. Yeah, that looks great. And that is next to some steamed vegetables as well as some croquettes in the back. Here is some pan fried gyoza for you. And that's also next to some gyoza sauce. This is beef sukiyaki. Oh, that's really interesting. I don't think I've seen that in a buffet before. That's really nice. And then we also have some steamed clams next to that. Yeah, it's really great. Wrapping around. Here is some basa fish. And this is orange chicken in the back and fried shrimp in the front. We have some beef hamburger here as well as pork cutlet. Oh, this is awesome. And then that is next to some fried shrimp and fish. You also have some tonkatsu sauce here. Definitely looking forward to going in on that. Looks like we have some soups. What is this? This is a, looks like a mushroom miso soup. And then we have the desserts. You have your chocolate fondue tower here. And then some fruits. Looks like we have bananas, pineapples, cantaloupe, and uh, honeydew here. Grapes, jello, some sweet azuki beans, and some oranges. We have some uh, cookies as well as, uh, what is this? They have it labeled as Natad Cocoa. I'm not sure what that is. We have some flan and some green tea pudding here. And that is next to some Japanese cheesecake and white chocolate berries. We have a taro mousse, a fruit cake, next to a Oreo mousse and chocolate cake. And then a mango mousse at the end here. And there's the buffet. I'm going to go ahead and put this down and we'll get our first plate. I'll be right back. Welcome back everybody. Now I have my first plate here and this is looking really good. Let me give you a view. I decided to go straight to the sushi section and load up my plate. I've got some salmon and mackerel nigiri here as well as a cooked tuna roll. I got the shrimp tempura roll as well as the deep fried roll and I had to try that beef roll. It looked really interesting. Definitely excited to give this all a try. Let's go in. First thing I'm trying today is the salmon nigiri. It has a beautiful orange color. I'm definitely in the mood for some sushi. Hopefully this is good. Unfortunately, that's not a great start. I will say the sushi rice here at Makino is really nice. Firm, not too gummy, sticky, but not dried out either with a decent amount of vinegar in there. Whoever's handling the sushi rice is definitely doing a good job. However, unfortunately, the salmon here is not all that great. While I don't have too many issues with the texture, unfortunately, the flavors are very muted to the point where I feel like I'm actually only tasting the rice. This is most likely because the salmon hasn't gone through enough of that aging process to really let those flavors concentrate. I'm definitely missing some salmon flavor here. We'll dip this into some soy sauce and wasabi. Let's see how this is. Certainly better. That salty umami from the soy sauce is really welcome here, considering that the fish is just so flavorless. Definitely love having that extra bite coming from the wasabi. But in general, I wouldn't say that's my favorite salmon sushi. I definitely think it could use a little bit of work. Next up, we're trying the mackerel nigiri. Now, mackerel is typically known as one of the more fishy sushi fishes that you can get. But based on how mild the flavors were with that salmon, I think this is going to be pretty welcome. Let's give it a try. Oh yeah, that's pretty good. The mackerel has so much more flavor than the salmon, it's unbelievable. It is very fishy and oily, but those are the prime characteristics of a mackerel fish. They've added some grated ginger on the top here that's providing some bite, and the green onion here provides a similar function as well. I don't have any serious complaints, the mackerel's solid. 50-50 when it comes to the nigiri so far, let's try the cut and rolls next. This is the cooked tuna roll. Definitely a lot going on here, but it does have a nice bright red color. Hopefully it tastes good, let's give it a try. No, that was pretty good. 
there's a very creamy richness to this roll. I want to say that's coming from the tuna salad here. I say tuna salad in the way you're probably thinking. It's tuna mixed with mayonnaise, as well as some additional spices here. It actually does have a pretty good flavor. There's a great freshness in the middle of the bite coming from that cucumber, and it also provides a crispy element that's really nice for the texture. There's a bit of a sweet element here coming from what I believe is eel sauce. You can kind of think of eel sauce as a very thick teriyaki glaze. There's also just a hint of nuttiness coming at the very end from what I want to say is some sesame oil. But honestly, it's all coming together very well. This is a fine roll. All right, my friends, shrimp tempura roll up next. Looks like a pretty standard shrimp tempura roll to me. Let's give it a shot. Oh yeah, that's really good. The sushi rice is great here. I hope you actually find me repetitive saying that because it means they're consistent with it. You get just a hint of heat coming in the very beginning of the bite from the spicy crab, which is almost immediately cooled down from the creaminess of the avocado here. Toward the center of the bite, you really start to appreciate the crunch as well as the flavors of the shrimp tempura, which ride your palate all the way to the end. The shrimp has a nice briny flavor, and the tempura batter is actually still crispy, which I really appreciate. The shrimp tempura is well seasoned, really letting that flavor shine through. I'm a fan. I actually really like their shrimp tempura roll. We're nearing the end of this first sushi plate. Here's the deep fried roll. Really curious as to what's on the inside of this roll, but hopefully it's all the stuff that tastes good. Let's give it a try. You know, that's not bad. While I was expecting a ton of flavor on this roll, for the most part, you're really just kind of tasting the batter. It actually makes the roll very dense. It did take a fair amount of chewing to get through it all. The batter is crispy and well seasoned, however it is leading to the flavors lasting for the entire bite, but it's certainly not bad. To be honest with you, I'm not sure what fish was in the center, but it was cooked. I want to say it was salmon, but the flavors are relatively muted, you don't get too much of it in the bite. You do get hints of sweetness coming from the eel sauce that's been drizzled on here, as well as a nice amount of bite from the green onions. However, it's really dense. I really don't taste too much of the fish, but the overall flavors aren't bad. I just wish there was a little more to this one. All right, my friends, and the last bite to try from this first plate is gonna be the beef sushi. I was definitely intrigued with this one. I've had surf and turf type sushi rolls from other restaurants before, and let's see how it is here in Makino. You know, I can't say I'm a huge fan of that one. I'm happy to report that the rice has stayed consistently good through every roll. So big ups to Makino, they've definitely got the rice down. But unfortunately, the beef here actually leaves a lot to be desired. It's a little tough and chewy, not all that tender. Initially, all I really tasted from the bite was ginger. And I was waiting for the taste of the beef for a very long time. I'd say the flavor of the beef is more of an aftertaste here. You get hints of its flavor, but it's not very robust. Now the beef does have some flavor coming from something that's like a soy sauce based marinade, but it's very faint. Almost a whisper at the tail end of the bite. You know, I've had a lot of beef sushis before, this is probably not one of the best ones. And that's my first plate everyone. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up the last few bites here and then we'll go for plate number two. Don't go anywhere, I'll be right back. Welcome back friends, now I have my second plate here. For my second plate, I hit up a lot of the hot food. Let's take a look. I got some yakisoba as well as fried rice. For proteins, I went on their chicken teriyaki and their beef short rib, as well as some of their tilapia. And then I thought I'd round some things off with something fried, so we have some croquette balls here as well. It is all looking really good, let's give it a try. First up, we're going in on the yakisoba. Yakisoba is a Japanese noodle dish, typically using ramen noodles or something like a wheat noodle, usually pan fried with vegetables or some kind of protein. I believe they have a vegetable version here, and it's looking good. Let's give it a shot. Oh yeah, that's really good. A great cook to the noodles here, a little softer than al dente, but they're certainly holding up with their firmness. No real complaints when it comes to that cook. The cabbage provides a nice crunchy element, while the green onion here is giving a little bit of bite. A signature difference from yakisoba compared to something like chow mein noodles is the tart sweet flavor profile you get in a yakisoba. It's a flavor very akin to like a Worcestershire sauce or a very cooked down ketchup. It gives yakisoba a very unique flavor compared to some of the more Asian noodle dishes you might be used to, and they've done an excellent job with it here at Makino. I really like this one. Next up, we'll try some fried rice. I'm not gonna lie, this looks like some of the most uninvolved fried rice I've ever seen. But honestly, as a side dish, it could be a good thing. Let's see how it is. Oh, 
you know, I'd say that's just okay. I want to say this is three ingredient fried rice. Rice, eggs, and soy sauce. There's really not a lot else going on here. It's very straightforward and simple. That said, the cook on the rice is fine, and you certainly get a little bit of salty umami from that soy sauce. I want to say the egg is mostly negligible. You're not really getting that richness that you want from it. This is basically the definition of a side dish. You don't want it really overpowering anything else on the plate. So for that, it does its job. Alrighty, next up we're going in on some protein, starting with the tilapia. It's actually a really good looking tilapia here. A nice sheen to it, with some herbs and spices that you can see. Hopefully this tastes good, let's give it a shot. You know what, not bad. They have developed a bit of a crust on the outside, which is providing a nice crispy texture. However, the inside is still flaky and moist. The tilapia does have a nice mouth flavor here. Overall, the dish is well seasoned. There's a nice richness here. There's a lot of the cooking oil that's been coated on the fish, leading to a pretty satisfying bite. This is a pretty straightforward seasoning blend. I want to say it's just salt and pepper. And while I do taste very faint wisps of lemon, I would certainly like the acidity to be bumped up a little bit more. Toward the tail end of the bite, you do get a little bit of that floral hit from the parsley. And in general, it's a solid tilapia. I don't have any serious complaints about this one. Next up, the chicken teriyaki. Hopefully the one here in Makino is good. Let's give it a taste. No, that's not bad. I wouldn't say this is the juiciest chicken I've ever had, but it's certainly not super dry. A relatively decent cook here, it's solid baked chicken. The teriyaki sauce is certainly a little bit sweeter than I would personally prefer. I think they could adjust the ratios a little bit to increase that depth of flavor. There are some charred bits on the chicken actually providing a nice bit of a caramelized flavor. And honestly, it's just kind of middle of the road teriyaki chicken, just a little bit of a better sauce, and I think I really like this one. Next up is the short ribs. This looks like a Korean preparation of short ribs here. Let's give it a taste. Oh yeah, that's fine. It's actually a really great flavor to the short ribs here. They really nailed the marinade. A really great mix of soy and garlic, as well as just a hint of sugar. There's just a little bit of ginger in that marinade, also providing some bite. The flavor of the short rib is very good. The meat itself, I wouldn't say, was the most tender piece of beef, but it certainly wasn't super tough. Maybe a tad on the chewier side, but nothing super egregious. Honestly, it's a pretty solid Korean short rib, no real complaints. And the last bite to try from my second plate is gonna be the croquette. Definitely loving the crispy looking breading on this. Let's give it a try. Hmm. Oh yeah, that's nice. A super crispy exterior here. I must have hit these at the right time because it's a perfect texture. The exterior has been reasonably seasoned. It's not bland at all. This is a potato croquette, so it's kind of like a mashed potato in the center. Though I will say, I think the filling could use a little bit of additional seasoning. It's definitely kind of a plain potato flavor. I think some kind of a saltier element here would really help. But I actually am a huge fan of the texture. It's at least fun to eat. All right, everyone, now that does it for plate number two. I'm going to go ahead and continue working on this, and then we'll go for plate number three. I'll see you on the other side of this break. Welcome back everyone, now I have my third plate here and this is looking really good, let me give you a view. I got their seafood pancake as well as some gyoza, their beef hamburger as well as some orange chicken. I also got some tonkatsu pork here and some beef sukiyaki. This is all looking so good, let's give it a try. First I'm going in on the gyoza, nice big gyoza here. Let's see how this tastes. Oh yeah, that's good. Great cook on that skin. You can tell it's pan fried because of the Maillard reaction on one side, and they did a really great job here. The skin is actually perfectly cooked. It's just really good. It's a pork-based gyoza, and the filling is actually very tasty. It's nicely seasoned, no bland pork here, and you also have really good levels of garlic and ginger in that mix. You get a little bit of bite coming from the green onions here, and a little bit of a soft texture coming from that cooked cabbage. Honestly, no complaints, this is really good gyoza. All right, my friends, orange chicken up next. These are really big chunks of orange chicken here. An Asian buffet classic. Let's see how it is here at Makino. You know what, that's not bad. Initially in the bite, all I really got was that breading. There wasn't a ton of chicken in the center. However, in getting through more of the chew, you definitely get in on some of that chicken, which is actually quite nice. Not dry by any means. It's very moist chicken in the center here. I really appreciate that. 
The chicken itself also has a good flavor, though I wouldn't exactly say it's the prevailing one. Certainly the sweet sauce here is the predominant flavor profile, though I wouldn't say it's as sweet as other orange chickens I've had. This is definitely much more of a savory orange chicken, and initially while I was a little off put by it, it actually did kind of grow on me. There's actually a very nice amount of garlic in that sauce, and in general it does taste pretty good. My only real chief complaint here is that for its size, it's very bready. And for as bready as it is, it's not exactly all that crispy either. Not the worst, not the best, pretty middle of the road orange chicken for me. Next up, we're doing the hamburger steak. This kind of a sweet hamburger is actually very popular in Japan. Hopefully the one here at Makino is good. Let's give it a shot. Hmm. Oh yeah, that's tasty. The exterior of this hamburger steak patty has been incredibly well caramelized. It has a beautiful crispiness as well as a bit of a nutty flavor. The beef inside is marvelously moist. I was not expecting that. A ton of moisture has been trapped inside this hamburger steak, leading to a really satisfying bite. You can see the bits of onions that they've mixed into the hamburger patty here. It provides a nice sweet flavor in the middle of the bite. I am a bit surprised with the sauce on the exterior. I thought it was going to be much more of a robust flavor, but it's actually quite mild. You get a bit of that sweetness from the glaze up front, and that's about it. You actually get to taste much more of the mayonnaise that's been applied, which gives the overall bite a bit of a rich, creamy flavor. Honestly, this is pretty good. I like the hamburger steak. Next up, I'm trying the pork cutlet with tonkatsu sauce. Growing up, this was one of my favorite dishes. Whenever we went to a Japanese place to eat, we got tonkatsu. This was a huge treat for me, and so I'm certainly hoping the one here in Makino is good. Let's give it a try. Yeah, that's pretty good. The coating here is actually still very crispy. That I love a lot. You never know when it comes to fried buffet foods like this. Depending on the timing, it could always be a bit flimsy. So thankfully, I definitely got this one at the right time. A really nice crunch from these panko breadcrumbs. And the exterior does have a nice seasoning to it. Honestly, it's a good preparation. The pork is overall decent. However, I will say it's a tad dry. I imagine that's because these have been pre-sliced on the buffet line. I know for a buffet, it's really hard to give away whole pork cutlets, but that's certainly going to be a drawback if some of that moisture is able to seep out from that breading. The tonkatsu sauce here is fantastic. It's sweet and tangy, exactly what you want from a good tonkatsu sauce. And it really plays well with this pork cutlet here, kind of ebbing and flowing between that sweet tanginess as well as that breading in the pork. Honestly, I'm a fan. If this was just slightly more moist, this would be amazing pork katsu. Next up, I'm trying the seafood pancake. This is also a very classic Japanese dish. Tons of seafood thrown into a batter and then cooked on a grill top to make something like a pancake. Hopefully the one here at Makino is good. Let's give it a shot. Oh yeah, that's good. A really nice texture to this one. They've got a crispy top as well as a really soft center. There's a lot going on in this seafood pancake. It's really a solid wave of flavors. Right up front, you actually get that sweet tanginess of that okonomiyaki sauce. Coupled along with some of that mayonnaise, it really gives a nice richness to the bite. Japanese sauces certainly have a really great flavor to them. Again, a little bit of that tang similar to a Worcestershire sauce, while you still get a nice caramelized sweetness from it as well as it's been baked. You actually get a really nice sweet onion flavor in the middle of the bite here as there's just a ton of it throughout the pancake. Now, I thought I had a bit of fish in that bite. However, a lot of the seafood flavor actually comes from the bonito flakes as well as the fish sauce that's been applied. And more than likely, the batter was actually made using some kind of fish stock. If I did have one critique, I would say this is probably closer to just a vegetable pancake as opposed to a seafood one. I don't think I actually got too many seafood elements in the bite. That said, the textures here are pleasant and the flavors are fine. Honestly, not a bad dish at all. And the last bite I'm trying for my third round is gonna be the beef sukiyaki. Beef sukiyaki is a Japanese hot pot dish, typically consisting of beef. And this one's looking really good. Let's give it a try. Wow, that is delicious. This is by far the best bite I've had of the day. It's so good. The beef here is fall apart tender. It's so soft. However, it does still have a bit of its integrity, allowing you to get a good chew through it. It's really satisfying. The sukiyaki broth here is fantastic. It's salty and savory, with a hint of sweetness coming from some sugar and mirin. So much of the fat from the beef has rendered into the sukiyaki broth, making it very rich. You get hints of garlic and ginger in here as well at the end of the bite, really putting an exclamation point at the end of a delicious note. The cabbage here is slightly more firm, but it's also soaked up a ton of those delicious flavors of that sukiyaki broth. 
And if you get a little bit of the strand of onions in here, it provides a little bit of bite as well, some sweetness. I adore this one, absolutely my favorite dish of the day. All right, everyone, now that's my third plate. A ton still to go through here, but I am starting to get pretty full. So I'm gonna continue working on this and then we'll go get some dessert next. Don't go anywhere, cause sweets are coming up. Welcome back everybody, it's definitely time for some dessert, I am so stuffed, so let me show you what I got. Keeping it simple today, I actually just wanted to get a little bit of green tea ice cream, but I also wanted to try this marshmallow dipped in the chocolate fountain. Now I'm definitely starting to get close to capacity here, so these are the last two items, let's do this. First up, the marshmallow dipped in chocolate. Now truth be told folks, I'm actually not a huge fan of these chocolate towers when it comes to a buffet, because the very first time I've ever seen one, I saw a kid dip his finger in it to lick it. But to be frank with you, I've eaten a lot worse and I've survived till now, so if this is the last bite I try in my entire life, I hope you guys have enjoyed the videos. Let's give it a go. Hmm. You know what, yeah, that's fine. It basically tastes like everything that was on the stick, chocolate and marshmallows. I will say the chocolate was very sweet. It's a milk chocolate, uh, very akin to a Hershey's milk chocolate bar. It did have a nice smooth creamy texture to it. It was certainly melted down properly and the marshmallow had its signature fluffiness as well. Can't really say I tasted much of the marshmallow at all in the entire bite. I guess the marshmallow is really just there as a vessel. And honestly, I don't have a ton of complaints when it comes to the taste of the chocolate. As long as I survive today, I'm really happy with it. And this is it, my friends, my last bite that I'm trying here at Makino Sushi and Seafood Buffet. This is the green tea ice cream. I believe you have your choice between vanilla, strawberry, green tea, and mango. I always opt for green tea ice cream when it's available. Hopefully the one here at Makino is good. Yeah, that's fine. Ultra creamy texture here. They're keeping that fridge at the perfect temperature. I'm not a huge fan when my ice cream is rock hard. I mean, as it stands, this plastic spoon probably wouldn't even make it through if that was the case. While it's soft and creamy, it also has a really nice flavor. A little bit of that sweet bitterness coming from the matcha. And in general, good sugar levels here, providing a very sweet treat. Now I'm willing to bet big money that this is store-bought. I'm pretty sure they're not churning their own matcha ice cream in the back but the elements they can control, like the temperature of the fridge was on point. Really no complaint from me. I really like this green tea ice cream. And there you have it, my friends, my weekend lunch here at Makino Sushi and Seafood Buffet. I gotta say for $30, I thought this was a great value. Tons of sushi on selection, and for the most part, the quality was pretty decent. Maybe that salmon nigiri wasn't the best, but the rest of the rolls were just fine. I thought the majority of the hot food was pretty good as well, although that beef sukiyaki really stole the show. Absolutely my favorite dish of the day. There are a lot of really great all-you-can-eat places here in Las Vegas, and honestly, for a weekend lunch, this is a pretty good spot. Now, I hope you enjoyed this Tuesday video where we check out a local eatery here in Las Vegas. I'll be returning this Saturday when we check out a more touristy location, more than likely on the Las Vegas Strip. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Have a great week, and I'll see you on Saturday. Bye.